are set for this non-conference battle in the middle of the season. It's time to meet our impact players in today's game. Let's start with Jordan Lennon of Norfolk State. Damien, we mentioned it in the open. He had his coming out party against Howard, 114 yards in that one. Yeah, the youngster over 100 yards for the first time in his young career. And this is a spark that Norfolk State could possibly use today to come away with a big upset. Uh, certainly could. And obviously, Bashaw Tootin for North Carolina A&T has been Mr. Everything. He was the FedEx Ground Stats National Offensive Player of the Week last week after going for 256 yards on the ground on 30 carries. What more can you say about Tootin? All the stats are outstanding, but what I love is that 6.9 yards per carry average. You know you're going to get a first down in two carries from two feet. You certainly are, especially when you have an offensive line like he does. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Sun Belt Rentals. Keys to the game. Damian, what do you got? For the visiting Spartans, they have to start fast. you got to score some points and, and really put you know, put a and on their heels defensively. Also, you got to keep the Aggies' get ground game in check. You know they're going to run the ball, A&T is. And you got to hang around until the fourth quarter, give yourself a chance to win the game. And for North Carolina A&T? As usual, ground and pound, run, tooting and run him often, make Norfolk State stop you from running the football. Also, if they want to load the box, exploit the Spartans' secondary. And lastly, don't look at Norfolk's record. Play the team, not the record, and you'll come away with a win. Sunbelt Rentals, we have equipment for that. We'll meet the starting lineups here in just a moment as Grandin Wilcox will send this one to the up back, and North Carolina A&T will have to go ahead and fall on it as Romello Kimbrough will secure the football, and we will see the North Carolina A&T offense here in just a minute as we get a look at the starting lineups pre presented by Sunbelt Rentals. Norfolk State, you see Tremaine Talbert. And for North Carolina A&T's offense, Jalen Fowler, really comfortable under center right now. He has been the guy that has led this offense and kept everybody in check as North Carolina A&T on a five-game winning streak. Fowler pressed into duty against South Carolina State, and he's really played well since that time. Tootin the motion man. The handoff to Kimbrough, and he is stuffed immediately by Anthony Bloom and that Norfolk State front four getting after it on the first play from scrimmage. And that is what you want to see if you're Norfolk State and their fans and their coaching staff coming into this ball game. Spartans giving up over 220 yards on the ground. Got a tackle for loss on that first play. It's a good way to start the defensive possession for the Spartans. You get a look at the North Carolina A&T bench. We're in the alternate grays today. Wins formation for the Aggies. Fowler, quick drop. He'll throw towards the outside and complete his first pass of the day. And that one will go to Zach Leslie, who had a tremendous game against Campbell last week. Four receptions, 124 yards, two touchdowns, and a 77-yard score. How about this one, Damian? 1,866 career receiving yards. He needs 134 yards to become the fourth Aggie with 2,000 receiving yards. That would be a huge accomplishment for Zach Leslie. It's third and six. Ten on the play clock. a t going to have to move quickly after getting the new play. Five ticks to go. Just gets it off. Fowler over the middle. That one is complete to Nicholas Dobson, and it will be very close to the first down marker. The officials will go ahead and wave the chains down. Nice route there by Dobson. Knew where the sticks were, got to it, made the catch to pick up the first down. So that tackle for loss on the first play of, of the game for Norfolk State defensively didn't really do much as the Aggies were able to move the sticks. A lot of familiarity between these two coaching staffs. Sam Washington actually recruited North Car Norfolk State head coach Dawson Odoms to North Carolina Central when Sam Washington was the defensive coordinator over in Durham. As Tavian Land in there on the stop. The ground game so far for North Carolina A&T struggling out of the gate. Two tackles for losses on two carries. 
for the run game of the Aggies, and you're going to see a lot of stunts. You're going to see a lot of stacked boxes. Spartans know that the Aggies want to run the football. It's going to put a lot of pressure on that secondary. a and may have to throw the football to set up the run. Second and 14. Fowler, plenty of time. Tosses that one to the outside, and it is complete to Burkhalter. And that will put the Aggies in third and medium situation. You see Burkhalter giving a lot of space on the outside, just long strides, run it, runs an easy out route, makes it third and manageable for North Carolina a and It'll be third and a long five for North Carolina a and The Aggies on the season... 49.1% conversion rate on third down. That's good for 12th in FCS. Fowler under pressure. The screen pass complete to Kimbrough. Has his legs taken out from under him just past the line of scrimmage. And that'll put a four in the box. And the punt unit will come on for the Aggies so that Norfolk State defense stands strong on the first test. All out blitz on third down by the Spartans. Fowler just has to dump it off. Didn't pick up enough for the first down. And that's a win for the Spartans. Not allowing AMT to drive down the field on that first possession. Tremaine Talbert is the return man for Norfolk State. He'll stand at his own 24, averaging just 5.5 yards per return this season. Caleb Brickhouse on to punt. A short end-over-end kick. It will take a Spartan roll and will be downed at the 43-yard line. So Norfolk State will have solid field position to begin its first drive from scrimmage here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Like I mentioned, Spencer, like it's a win to the 100 degree for Norfolk State to force a punt for the Aggies and not just force a punt, but not allowing a and to run the football on that first drive. So now you're gonna see what the Spartans can do offensively. Last week for North Carolina a and it was the defense that got things going. Jacob Roberts with a one-handed interception that he took to the house. The quick pass towards the outside is complete to Lennon. So Jordan Lennon getting involved early here for the Spartans offense. You want to get the ball into the hands of the youngster. He has the hot hand coming off of his first 100-yard game last week. So... Get the balls in his hands, see if he can make a play with his athleticism. Otto Coons, the six foot three, 194 pound sophomore, a transfer in from Eastern Illinois, leading the Spartans offense this afternoon. Bobbles the snap, throws it towards that Spartan sideline, completes the pass to Colas Pride. And the Spartans will earn their first first down of the day. That's got to be a good sign for Spartans fans picking up a first down after getting good field position on the Aggie punt. I mentioned that was one of the keys to the game. Start fast, score some points early to let North Carolina a and know that they're in for a dogfight today. Norfolk State averaging just 13.6 points per game in offense. Coons will drop back. Heaves this one down the sideline and incomplete. Coverage provided by Janaz Sumter. Sumter, stride for stride down the sideline. Great coverage using the sideline as an extra defender. Didn't give Spartan wide receiver an opportunity to come back and make a play on the football. It'll bring up second and 10 for Norfolk State. One and seven on the season, one and two in MEAC play. A team that was picked to finish third in the conference. J.J. Davis was expected to be the offensive player of the year. A lot of shifting going on. Two on the play clock. Just get the snap off. The handoff to Lennon. He gets hit tossed down to the grass. And it'll be third and nine upcoming for Norfolk State. Penetration in the backfield by that D front for the Aggies. To get a chance to get started because Lennon is going to bring up a big third down here for Norfolk. Yeah. 
So third and nine for the Spartans in Aggie territory. Coons dropping back, plenty of time. Now flushed from the pocket, throws on the run, and it's intercepted. What a Aaron play. Harris. What a play by Harris. Usually makes an impact on the return game. Came in as an extra DB. And Coons, this is the ultimate sin as a quarterback. You're flushed out of the pocket, just throw it away, live to play another day. Thinks he can fit it in there. Excellent play by the Aggie defense. And now you see a little bit of juice in the crowd. It was quiet before that interception. Now you see the Aggies a little bit hype on the sideline. We'll take a timeout, timeout. on the other side of this break. We'll see North Carolina A&T's offense for the second time today. We're back after this on ESPN+. Plus. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. There's over 450 million Hoopers out there. One will outscore the country and put Norman on the map. Less than 1% of high school players get a scholarship. Odds a freshman will lead the nation in points and assists. One, and never been done. 1.3% of college players get drafted. Only one will drop 48 and 11 in the conference finals. One will know this is just the beginning. Trey had a one and a half billion chance to get here, but he saw a possibility. The B1 Performance Patch elevates physical functions by transforming carbs into glucose used to fuel the body. Don't compete without it. Visit buyb1.com or on social media at B1 Patch. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Back with you here in Greensboro, North Carolina. The crowd's starting to file in as the Aggies will get to work after that Aaron Harris interception. Fowler with the pump fake to throw, and Leslie can't bring it in. It'll fall incomplete. And you saw Sam Washington there on the sideline. Give a little clap of his hands. Felt like he had that play. Outstanding play call. Leslie had a step and a half, just not able to hook up with it on the sideline. But more importantly, Aggies coming into this ball game, you know what they want to do. They want to run the football. They're going to establish the run at some point in this game. Can Norfolk State do on this drive what they did on the first drive? Second and ten. The handoff to Tootin, and he has his legs taken out from under him. After a gain of a few, it'll bring up third and seven. You know, Damian, uh, part of this could be on the offensive line that some people are out of place. Cesar Monaro, the center, is out because of a high ankle sprain, so Lawrence Legron will get the start at center. He did finish the day as the center during homecoming just a week ago, and now it looks like Dak Wilson will actually start snapping. Fowler looking, throws over the middle, and Leslie can't bring that one in. And a three and out for this North Carolina A&T offense. You have to wonder if there might be a little homecoming hangover. G-ho hangover for sure, and with these early starts, you got to 
be ready to play when the ball is snapped. And right now, a t lethargic. It was cloudy out earlier. Super producer Sam Hanna mentioned the clouds. We needed to up our energy in the booth. I think the Aggies need to up their energy out on the field. But if you're Norfolk State, you love this. Two straight stops defensively. Hanging around, that's one of the keys. Hang around as long as you can to give yourself an opportunity. Brickhouse brings the high snap down. It's a line drive punt that will take an Aggie roll into the red zone across the 15 and will be downed at the 13-yard line. So an effective punt by Media. Brickhouse, the Northern Colorado transfer. And we'll take a timeout on that note. We're back after this on ESPN+. Plus. Back with you here at Truist Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. It'll be first and 10 for Norfolk State from the 13 yard line. Very important for the Spartans here to take care of the football. Don't want any turnovers deep in your territory. Play action. That one is hauled in by Norfolk State. What a play to start the drive. Collis Pride. Collis Pride going up top, locating the ball, high pointing it, coming down with a big first down catch. And Norfolk State now no longer pinned near its end zone, so the Spartans have some room to work. First and 10. Keep it on the ground, and a big hit by a pack of Aggies on Jordan Lennon. That's a welcome to FCS football young man type of hit. Yeah, Lennon, you mentioned, didn't come into the season as running back one, but coming off that 100-yard effort last week, now he's getting the bulk of the carries thus far in this game, but he is still a freshman. He got welcome to FCS football on that play there. J.J. Davis did not play against Howard last week. He was the offensive preseason player of the year in the MEAC. Option, Coons keeps it and is corralled. And defensively, the Aggies, they should be able to stop Norfolk State. Spartans don't have a potent offense. It's just a matter of when and where the Aggies offense will wake up in this ball game. Someone needs to provide a spark. We thought it may be on that interception on the last drive, but now you big third down here. You can get off the field defensively if you're in North Carolina a and Third and 11 for Norfolk State. The Spartans 36% conversion rate on third down. 
Coons. Five-step drop under pressure, throws over the middle. That pass is complete, but it will not be enough for a first down as Daquan Felton brings it in, but there is laundry all over the field. And it will be offensive pass interference as the call. Well, you saw the Spartans try to run a natural pick play, but it was just discombobulated as Felton was trying to drag across the field. Play took a long time to develop. North Carolina A&T is going to decline the penalty and let the box Passive read with a four. Number 11, offense. So the, the penalty is will come on. Fourth down. And the defense will come off the field. Wasn't sure if the Spartans coming in as a big underdog would get a little cheeky and go for it there on fourth, but Correction. they're going to punt it away. Number 27. Number Norfolk 27 State has only converted three fourth down opportunities this season, so... You throw all that out. <laughs> you playing a, a old Miak rival. You, you might want to play this game like a game of Madden. Go for it on every fourth down. Anthony Rucker is back deep for North Carolina A&T. That punt will go out of bounds. The officiating crew will run up the sideline to spot the ball. And we will be back after this. The Aggies get started from the 40 on ESPN+. Plus. We're back with you here in Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina A&T will operate from its own 40-yard line. And you might hear the Norfolk State Star Spartans marching band in the background. You know, Damian, most places they play four quarters of football, but two HBCUs are on the field. There's going to be a fifth quarter here today in Greensboro as the bands will get in on the action after the ball game. Jamison Warren will fly over the 45 and come down like Superman at the 46. Aggie's trying to get something going on offense, just get it into the hands of a playmaker, and Warren gets as much as he can. Nice game there on first down. a and doing its best Campbell impression here, operating quickly. Fowler to the sideline. Leslie brings it in around midfield. We'll see where forward progress is marked to. Fowler's pass is complete. Yeah, Aggie's just trying to switch it up. You mentioned picking up the tempo. Trying to get a spark. The initial spot was at the marker. The final spot will come back a yard. And it'll bring up third and one from the 49-yard line. And you see Romello Kimbrough come into the game for North Carolina a t along with DeAndre Arnold Gaskin. So the heavy package is coming in. Heavy package is in, definitely. But don't be surprised. Get a little play action trickeration.
Kimbrough, the handoff. He'll cross the 50, has some room to work. He's angled out of bounds after the first down. So the big man getting in on the action. Okay, Kimbrough in the Aggie offense is putting in their mind. We're going to run for this first down. Kimbrough's a big man. Give him a full head of steam. You don't want to get in the way of that young man. So it'll bring up first down for North Carolina A&T from the 41-yard line of Norfolk State. Fowler, pump fake, looking, plenty of time, throws to Leslie in the middle of the field. He's at the 15-10 and brought down by his tippy toes. Yeah, Leslie sniffing out that end zone. He saw it. Shoe screen tackle there to prevent him from scoring a touchdown, but it's a huge pickup for Leslie. You see here on the replay, pump fake by Fowler. Comes back to Leslie. Leslie wide open in the middle. Exploiting that Spartan secondary for a first down. So North Carolina A&T will operate in the red zone for the first time today. 23 of 28 on the season. The handoff to Tootin. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown North Carolina A&T. If you're the Aggies, that's more like it. Excellent push up front by those big guys, creating open running lanes for Tootin. He's in for the touch. Some extracurriculars out on the field after. As Tootin saw the Red Sea part in front of him, and he reaches the promised land. A nice kick out block allows Tootin to smell that end zone. Tugboat Tootin for six. The Aggies so far this season, 5-0 and oh, when Bashal Tootin scores a touchdown. Andrew Brown on for the extra point. And he punches that one through easily. We'll see if A&T can extend its streak. When Bashal Tootin scores, the Aggies seem to win. We'll see if that holds true here in Greensboro this afternoon. North Carolina A&T now up 7-0 with 3.52 to go in the first quarter quarter and the pass setting up that run Jalen Fowler had a year and a day in the pocket on that one yeah Fowler looked to his left looked to his right came back to Leslie over the middle to set up that tooting touchdown run but outstanding kick out block by Romello Kimbrough on the touchdown run sealing off the defender allowing Tootin to tug his way to the end zone maybe that will give the life into the crowd, into the sideline that the Aggies need. Again, these 12 p.m. kickoffs, which I love, they're great for me, but these are college kids here. You know, they, you know you're 19, 20 years old. You're not a morning person or an early afternoon person. Well, North Carolina a and seemed to figure it out on that drive. And the Aggies will get set to kick this thing off. Are not working to the Spartans. The play clock will be kept on the, the field. The North, Norfolk State is to respond. Be it a drive, get yourself in field goal range, do something to respond. Edwin Lee, our referee, just made an announcement to something I actually spotted a little bit ago. The play clock is out on the field, so the play clock will be kept on the field until it is turned back on. Yeah, you mentioned that a few minutes ago, partner, and it's just a wonky game so far. The play clock's still asleep. <laughs> Brown sends this one deep. And into the end zone for a touchback. We spoke about it when we saw North Carolina a t a little bit earlier this season. That's his 14th touchback of the year. And what a weapon for the Aggies special teams to have a guy like Andrew Brown to be able to put that thing in the end zone. Yeah, not only a weapon on kickoffs, putting it in the end zone for touchbacks, but his field goal range is about 49 to 55 yards. I think he can knock it in from about 55. And on a good day, he may, can stretch it to 60, but that's a weapon just to be able to put manufacture points on drives. Otto Coons trots back out onto the field for Norfolk State. It'll be... Kevin King out on the field with him, who is wrapped up and brought down immediately by that North Carolina A&T defense. 
Excellent stop in the backfield. Tackle for loss. Nowhere to run for the Spartans. It's King all in the backfield. Brings up second and 14. Far Pardon, that's A.J. Dupree yeah. in the backfield. The youngster from Snow Hill, North Carolina. Norfolk State taking its time. Setting up shop. Here's Coons. Under pressure. Throws. And that one will fall incomplete as Tremaine Talbert tried to haul it in with one hand. Robert Porche providing the rush. Of course, his dad knew a thing or two about a little bit of a rush. Played 12 seasons in the NFL for Detroit. He was a three-time Pro Bowl. That name sounded familiar. And Coons tried to make something out of nothing. Would have been an excellent grab. But Tal Talbert couldn't pull it in. And that was going to be a third and long situation. Do you keep it on the ground and just punt it away? Or do you be aggressive and try to push the ball down the field? It's a non-conference game. You're trying to finish out the season on a strong note and figure things out. You're probably taking some chances in this game. Coons flush from the pocket again. Somehow still on his feet, throws it out of desperation, out of bounds. And he got awfully lucky there as there were about four Aggies swarming. The Aggie defense in the backfield immediately. And Coons did well just to get away and throw the ball away. It's going to set up punting situation. And the Aggies, with a good return, will be back in business on the plus side of the field. So a quick three and out. Carson Wilt will punt this away, and now we have a whistle. Timeout. Norfolk State. Their first of the and half. And a timeout taken by Norfolk seconds. State. It'll be a 30-second timeout. So, Damien, we've seen this North Carolina A&T defense Look really solid here. Already an interception. A couple three and outs. Uh, the Aggies, really since the second quarter of their game last week against Campbell, through now, the defense has been ready to go and looking like a, a team that could make a run at a conference championship. So defensively, the Aggies have athletes all over the field. And when you can run sideline to sideline like King and and Roberts at the linebacker position, that's going to free up a lot of things in the secondary. They got shut down corner and fronty. Aggies defensively really stepped up. Like you mentioned, second quarter on, holding Campbell to only you know, seven points, ten points after they were, looked like they were just going to go up and down the field the entire game. Aggies defense really came through in a major way last week and is carrying over into today's contest. Anthony Rucker back deep for a and Will try and field this rollout punt. He'll grab it at the 35. And is able to advance it to the 40. So North Carolina a and will begin its second drive from the same location. That's a pretty good punt there, all things considered. And to have great coverage, not allow a good return defensively right now. Norfolk State going to have to come up with a stop. They did it on the first two drives for North Carolina A&T, giving up the touchdown on that last drive. But Spartans, they can't get down by a huge amount in this game. They don't score a lot of points to begin with. Their offense is not built to come from behind. So Jalen Fowler will work from the shotgun. A&T leading Norfolk State 7-0 here on the east side of Greensboro, North Carolina. Fowler, quick drop, flush from the pocket, gets away from the rush, looking downfield, and will throw this one away. Fowler getting away, getting outside the pocket. Not known for his running ability, although he can run the football, just makes the smart decision and throw it away. You saw Coons, a younger player on the other side, similar situation, throw an interception on that play. So Fowler just throws it into the dirt and lived to play another down. The play clock has been fixed out on the field, and so time will be kept for everybody in the stadium. Marquise Hall, the first-team preseason all-MIAC linebacker, 
was the one who provided that rush on the last play. The North Carolina A&T will sort things out at the 40-yard line, second and 10. The handoff, and Tootin is greeted immediately by two Spartans. And it'll bring up third and 10. Well, for defense knows we have to stop Tootin before he gets going. If you can win at the point of, a, of the attack, at that defensive line, get some penetration, can make some plays behind the line of scrimmage. Going to set up a third and long here for a &T. We have a whistle, and the clock has been stopped out on the field. Please set the game clock to two minutes, 13 seconds, 213. Game clock needs to be set to 213. Thank you. The clock will the start. The last time these two teams signal. met each other it was 2019 in Norfolk. A&T beat Norfolk State 58-19. So probably some hard feelings between the two squads still lingering from that one. Well, old MEAC foes, even though they're not in the same conference anymore, Aggies moved on to the Big South. Norfolk's still in the MEAC, but two programs and two institutions very familiar with each other. Back to the CIAA days. As that one is brought in by Jerkari Caldwell. To number 88. And that'll bring up a first down for the Aggies at midfield. Yeah, that was too easy there on third and long. You know that. Aggies were going to have to stretch the routes to the sticks. Caldwell got to the sticks, put his foot in the ground, came back to the football, high points it. And it's one thing about the Aggie receivers, they all have a lot of size. Wesley Graves has checked into the ball game. He'll serve as the single back. Quick toss. To the sideline, Caldwell, back-to-back -back receptions. And Caldwell, like you mentioned, consecutive catches and got to try to soften up this defense for the run game. That's what it appears is going to happen here. Norfolk is determined to stop the run. Fowler should have some success through the air. Caldwell, a transfer in from the University of South Carolina. Graves. Tries to go up the middle, gains a couple, and it'll bring up third and one from the 41. The tough going on the ground. Sands those two runs, a touchdown run by Tootin. Fowler works under center. Gives the old Tom Brady heave ho, and he's across the first down marker, and the drive will continue. As we come down the stretch here of the first quarter. I like that. That's old school football. Third and one. Get out of the shotgun. Get under the center. You need one yard. Get a push up front. And do you just know, get the first down. Do you know how many guys in college football that work out of the shotgun traditionally don't even know how to take an under center snap these days? I mean, it's not that hard. So I've been told. And that is the end of the first quarter here in Greensboro. North Carolina A&T. Leads seven nothing. We're back after this on ESPN Plus.
North Carolina A&T leads it 7-0. Damien, I think you and I both a little surprised. Bashal Tootin, just eight yards in this ball game. Net does have a touchdown to his name. But really, it's been Jalen Fowler, 9 of 12 through the air for 79 yards that has gotten this Aggie offense going. Well, I had a feeling that the Aggies would have to throw the football to find success on the ground. Fowler, the long toss to the end zone, and he leads his receiver just a little too far. Jakari Caldwell was the intended target. My goodness. Yeah, Caldwell had a couple of steps on the defender. Fowler just led him a bit too much. Just out of his reach. Would have been a huge play here on the replay. Clean pocket for Fowler. Let's it fly. Caldwell just out of his reach. Would have been a heck of a play. Fowler with a whole bunch of time to operate. Here's Warren. Got a block. And will get taken down at the 33. Yeah, Warren Time holding out. his knee. For the injury to an After offensive player. Tackle. Let's hope that young man's okay. Joseph White on the tackle for Norfolk, holding that left knee. Warren has been a huge weapon for North Carolina AT over the last couple of seasons. Played his high school football down the road at East Forsyth in Kernersville, North Carolina. Warren. And Warren feels that slot receiver position perfectly. A lot of yak yards, yards at the catch. Got about a seven yard gain before he was tackled. Immediately started holding his knee, his left knee. Let's hope he's okay. He's going to be helped off the field. And Warren not able to put a lot of pressure on that leg. That's one thing about football. You see one of your teammates go down. You got to get right back out there and play the game. Let's hope Warren's okay. It'll be third down and four. It will be third and four for North Carolina A&T. Fowler will be the motion man. The direct snap to Tootin, and he breaks free down the sideline. 10-5, touchdown, North Carolina A&T. Tootin caught him lacking, direct snap, gave him the stanky leg for six. Impressive run by Rudin Tootin. See the replay. Fowler goes in motion. Tootin, look at the move at the line of scrimmage. Has defenders diving at his legs. And here you see the speed of Tootin. Not just power, but speed. We were just speaking. Only eight yards for Tootin. And there you have it. Add to his tally. And Tootin, you can contain him. You can contain him. But eventually, he's going to pop one. And he continues to earn yardage after tackle attempts. You have to really wrap him up with multiple defenders if you're going to try and bring him down. Andrew Brown will punch this one through, and it's 14-0. North Carolina A&T as Bashal Tootin with two touchdowns here in the first.
Back with you here in Greensboro, North Carolina A&T leads it 14-0 against former conference rival times two, Norfolk State. You see Bashal Tootin break free on that direct snap, and he's in for his second score of the day. Excellent play call by OC Chris Barnett for the Aggies. Running foul in motion, little trickeration. Put it in the hands of Tootin. He makes a couple Spartan defenders miss, and he's off to the races for the touchdown. This Aggie coaching staff has a knack for finding those under-recruited running backs. Chris Barnett was the guy who actually recruited Bashal Tootin, as Andrew Brown will go ahead and put through another touchback. Went up to New Jersey and got him. And it's amazing. You would think that a and eventually the, the well would run dry, but the, the running back situation here just keeps getting stronger and stronger. I mean, this is 10, 15 years in the making now of strong running backs. The Aggies want to be known as running back you. They've had a string of running backs in recent memory who have dominated Tootin just the latest to do so. The handoff to Lennon. And he's dropped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of two. Lennon, nowhere to go. Penetration immediately by the Aggies. Anthony Hairston, the second, was first on the scene. Lennon, tackle for loss. That's going to be one thing that Norfolk State has to do. They have to run the football to try to keep the defense honest. Got a, a weapon on the outside. You've seen Collis Pride make a nice catch down the sideline, so you want to try to utilize him, but you're going to have to run the football as well. Second and 12, Coons lofts this one towards the sideline, and it'll be a little too long as Chris Butler was the intended receiver. It'll bring up third and 12. Spartan's going to have to keep taking shots. Now you're down two scores. It's still early in the ball game. You haven't given any indication that you can sustain a long drive versus these Aggies. It's going to have to be a couple of big plays sprinkled in. Coons under pressure. The screen pass is intercepted. It's Roberts again, back-to-back -back weeks with pick sixes. Big play Jake is what I'm going to call him from now on. Two straight weeks, like you mentioned, pick sixes for the outstanding linebacker, Jacob Roberts. And just like that, you don't want to make a mistake in your own side of the field. Coons overthrows the screen pass. Roberts is right there to pick it off. He lets his legs do the rest. Pick six for Roberts. And North Carolina A&T has woken up from its slumber. And the Aggies are rolling. So. It appears so. It was a little sleepy in Truist Stadium. Aggies, a couple of touchdowns by Tootin. And now Jacob Roberts on the pick six. And now you hear the crowd get into it. And Norfolk State, Norfolk State's really going to be Behind the eight ball now. Don't have an offense that scores a ton of points anyway. When you're trailing by three scores, you only average about 13.6 points per game if you're the Spartans. North Carolina A&T leads it 21-0. We're back after this on ESPN+. Plus. Hard work. A love for the game is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, 
wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Hey, my name is Javon, and I'm fortunate enough to play basketball at John C. Smith University. I know how much love we have for our HBCUs. I experienced that in my high school, Quality Education Academy. I'm Dr. Tamara Turner, CEO of Quality Education Academy. It's been a pleasure to watch Javon grow and mature into the young man that he's become today. And he is one of thousands that my school, along with over 20 other black-led schools of choice, educate from an HBCU culture and environment. Prior to going to QEA, I often went to schools that were overpopulated and less diverse, and that's ultimately why I personally wanted to uh, choose QEA. I'm here to let you know you have a choice too. Get out your phone right now. Text NC Choice to 52886 to learn more. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Back with you at Truist Stadium, North Carolina A&T leads it 21 nothing as Jacob Roberts back-to-back -back weeks with interceptions that he takes to the house. Just sniff that out. The Coons under light pressure, not a ton of pressure, but just overthrows Lennon. Big play Jake, second straight week with a pick six for the Aggies. Jacob Roberts out of Mallard Creek High School near the Charlotte area. One of the top high school football programs in North Carolina over the last 20 years. And another touchback for Andrew Brown. And Norfolk State probably won't have an opportunity to return the football today unless they want to take a risk and pull it out of the end zone. Eventually, the, those return guys, they want to run the football. So at some point, they'll bring, the bit. they'll bring it out of the end zone at some point. But more importantly, offensively here, especially on this drive, Norfolk State, you have to put consecutive first downs together, put some points on the board. Doesn't have to be a touchdown. If you're a Spartan coach, fan, you would love for them to score a touchdown now, but a field goal, any type of points, put a drive together to keep your defense off the field. New quarterback in for Norfolk State. It will be Jalen Adams, the Citadel transfer. And nowhere to run for Adams. No gain. Much like his predecessors. Leading the charge now for the Spartan. Nothing doing on that ground game for Norfolk State so far. Adams on the season, 32 for 59 through the air, four touchdowns, three interceptions. Spartans just looking for a spark, changing quarterbacks. Option play, the pitch, and that will result in a loss of two for Norfolk State as Kevon King... Had nowhere to go. Yeah, that was played on the outside expertly by the Aggie defense. Don't see a lot of option in today's football unless you're playing like Navy or Air Force or one of those service academies. The Aggies played that one well. It'll bring up third and long for Norfolk State. Ten on the play clock for the Spartans to work with. Adams going to change the play with three ticks on the play clock. Rolls out towards the wide side, cuts up field, has some room, and is stopped shy of the first down marker. It'll put a four in the box. And now a decision to be made by the Spartans. Do you try and spark this offense and get something going and take a risk? And it appears like... Dawson Odoms will go ahead and play it safe and call the punt unit out. Jalen Adams almost got that first down, rolls to the left, tucks it and runs, and almost picking up that first down. Coach Odoms like, hey, I may go for it, but now nah, I'll think twice about it. We'll punt it, play defense, and see if we can stop the Aggie offense. High spiraling punt. 
That one is fielded and immediately brought down is Anthony Rucker. Kennedy on the return. Gain of one. Rucker pressed into return duties today. Legal substitution on the defense. 12 players on the field of the snap. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Big penalty there for North Carolina A&T. He's going to give Spartans the ball back on offense with a first down. North Carolina A&T was plagued with substitution penalties just a week ago. That was an outlier. Campbell played with breakneck speed. Didn't allow substitutions. Several substitution penalties by the Aggies. It's the first one this afternoon. So you always get one, I guess, if you're a coaching staff. You'll, you get one. But you don't want it to be a reoccurring thing. Adams' pass is complete to Talbert. Adams' pass is complete. Could that be the break that the Spartans need to put a drive together and put some points on the board? Those are the types of things that happen in a game that let teams crawl back in. Norfolk State is going to have to do a lot of crawling to get back into this one. Coming into the ball game, I mentioned only averaging about 13, 14 points a game. So they would have to exceed their average to come back and retake the lead or tie the ball game. That one complete again to Talbert. Awfully close to the first down marker. We'll see where the spot is. And it will be a first down. Talbert again. Two straight catches. Results in a first down from Norfolk State. You've got to string these first downs together. Get yourself in position to score points, start feeling good about yourself offensively. Quarterback keeper and Adams is dragged down from behind by Caleb Jones. Check that, Devin Harrell. Nowhere to go. Jones, Devin Harrell shows that athleticism that 6'3", 235 frame. Tracks down the quarterback for tackle for loss. Really good to see Devin Harrell back out on the field. A few weeks ago against Edward Waters, he had to be helped off by EMTs after a hit. It was a helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision. So wonderful to see him back out on the field after just a few weeks. Adams, flush from the pocket, has some room to operate. He's into Aggie territory and gets planted at the 44, Adams it'll bring up third and two. That's what Adams can give you. The running threat took a big hit at the end here. See pressure, happy feet by Adams. He decides to take off, gets as much as he can. Makes one defender miss, but eventually it's planted, but it's gonna make it a third and short for Norfolk State. the Spartans. It's a must pick up for third down. You'll think about going for it on fourth if you don't get it here. The end around. The handoff to and on the hit, it might be enough for the first down. It will be very close. The initial spot says fourth down. I think the decision has already been made. You don't see any movement from the special teams on the Spartan sideline. They're going to go for it. Norfolk State will go for it here on fourth down so far this season. The Spartans, three of 13. At Adams this point, you got to roll center. the dice. He'll keep it himself. And the pile looks like might have pushed him just enough. We'll see how everybody rolls off. The dog pile, and it will indeed be a first down for the Spartans. So the drive continues, 
after the penalty allowed the Spartans back out onto the field. Yeah, Adams not a big guy either, but under center, much like Fowler did on his short yardage first down run. And this drive is aided by a penalty from North Carolina a and Could result in points being scored by Norfolk State up to the Aggies defensively to get off the field. The handoff up the middle goes Jalen White. Jalen White made the first to defender miss. Picked up a pretty good game there on first down and one of the better runs of the ball game by a Spartan running back. See, it's quiet here, partner. Not a lot of juice in the stands. It's the week after homecoming, so you know, I think people partied hard last week. White will get tackled as he reaches the 30-yard line, and that will bring up another Spartans first down. I, I think people somewhat frustrated by how penalties have affected this North Carolina a and team this season. While there haven't been many here today, uh, that penalty... Some are exhausted after what they saw last week. Well, that penalty on this drive gave the Spartans new life, gave them a first down, and they've been able to turn that into a couple of first downs, and now they're you know, well within scoring range if you want to settle for a field goal. But they're thinking seven here to get back into the ball game. Talbert on that reception, and Adams is not doing it right now by going deep downfield. He's... Working the screen game, little chunks here and there, using his feet. Very methodical. Again, Adams brings that run game from the quarterback position into play as well, so you have to be mindful of that defensively for a &T. Screen pass, White, and he gets sandwiched. White. Made the first defender, David Laney, miss. Laney, first on the spot, but a couple of Aggies cleaned it up there at the end, and it'll be another third down situation here for Norfolk State. Third and three for Norfolk State. Spartans lining up at the 23-yard line. Two-step drop, had time, left that one short, and it'll bring up fourth down. And I got to tell you, Damian, I, I think this might be a situation where you go for it on fourth down if you're Norfolk State. Talbert had a step, could have picked up a first down had it been a more accurate pass from Adams. But the pass was in the dirt, and now Norfolk State just wants to get on the board and on the season only connected on two field goals so far this season. With a long of 29 for Grandin Wilcox. And this will be a 40-yard field goal attempt. Showing a lot of confidence in your kickers, Coach Odoms. The hold is down, and we have a whistle and a timeout. That kick had plenty of leg. Before the snap... Timeout, Norfolk State. They're second of the half. And Norfolk State with the timeout. Coach Odoms. 30 seconds. And you want to think twice about it. The long field goal, but like you mentioned, partner, plenty of distance. That, that field goal was good. And if you are Grandin Wilcox, you are probably a little upset with your head coach right now. That would have been his longest field goal of the season. Would have, could have, should have. But like one of my old coaches always told me, if if and butts was candy and nuts, it will be Christmas every day. <laughs> so you, you, you call That's the time one. out. Now, do you go for it on fourth? Or do you line back up and kick it again? And if you line back up and kick it again and you miss that kick, you'll be, Coach Odoms will be kicking himself for calling that timeout. I see a lot of movement game. on the sideline for Norfolk State. I think that there might be a fourth down offensive attempt here by the Spartans. 
And Coach Odom is thinking like, hey, we're down 21-0. Three points is good. We need seven. I, I was a little surprised when I saw Wilcox trot out there. I'll be honest. You know, I, I don't pretend to be a coach in the minds of a coach, but I played football back in my day. And sometimes as a, a coach, you just want to get on the board. You know, get some type of confidence by scoring some points. And I think that that's what Coach Owens wanted to do with the field goal attempt, but he thought about it like, hey, it's pretty long. Let's call a timeout and, and maybe run it on fourth down. Adams will work from the shotgun. Under pressure, throws towards the end zone, and that'll bring out a pass interference flag on Karan Prunty. The Prunty was in position, turned around late. Pass interference. But he's going to be flagged for pass interference. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. I think the timeout paid off for Coach Odoms. It sure did. Now you're in the red zone deep with a new set of downs. And Prunty again in position just didn't turn around and make a play on the ball. And he's called for pass interference. Now defensively, if you're North Carolina a and you got to bow your back. Know that Spartans trying to get back into the ball game with a touchdown. So first and goal from the eight. Adams, two-step drop, throws over the middle, and that one is broken up, and a flag comes out. Back-to-back -back flags on the Aggie defense. This time, Prunty trying to step in front. Pass interference, number one. Swat the ball defense. away. The ball we placed at the two-yard line. Back-to-back -back PIs on KP, Karan Prunty. There you see the replay. Adams throwing at you. Didn't see a lot there. May have been called for wrapping that left arm around the Spartans receiver. Tough to see it from that angle, but it appeared like the ball was already played by the time the wrapping occurred. But we'll see. Adams towards the end zone. That one behind his intended receiver, Pride. And it will bring up second and goal. Collis Pride, who has had... Second down and goal to go. A couple of catches in this ball game. Adams couldn't hook up with him on that one, but deepest that the Spartans offense have has been today. Now, on this, you have to come away with a touchdown on this drive to give yourself an opportunity. And remember, Norfolk State, they declined. They'll get the ball to start the second half. Norfolk State, 14 trips to the red zone this season. Nine times they've scored, seven of them touchdowns, as that one will come up short. Lennon on the carry, and he is stopped at the two. It will bring up third and goal. Pack of Aggies there, Caleb Jones, Tyquan King, and Roberts on that tackle, stopping Lennon from getting in the end zone, bringing up a third and three situation. Jalen White has come into the game as a second running back, and now we will have... A whistle, and the clock will be stopped out on the field. For argument's sake, Please third and goal, you don't clock. get it. Kicking a field goal, After four minutes, going for it. Coach Odoms has the dice before. And the clock will be reset to 431. Thank you. Aggie Nation, it's third. It's third and goal. Be mindful of Adams. And his ability to run the football here if you're A&T. Adams, the quarterback keeper. And he is into the end zone. I don't pretend to be a psychic, but... You might, you might just be one. Well, Deion Warwick and myself, we share the same melanin. Here you look at the replay. Adams just gets it and goes. And he fights to get into the end zone. Stopped about a yard short, but spins into the zone and gets Norfolk State on the board. So the Spartans erase the goose egg. It's 21 to 6. And Wilcox will come on for the PAT. He's 13 of 13 this season. Yeah, so the timeout on the field goal pays off for Coach Odoms and the Norfolk State Spartans as they 
get on the board with seven points. Wilcox punches it through. It's 21 to 7. AT on top. The Spartans on the board. We're back after this on ESPN Plus. Spartans on the board for the first time today. Trailing 21 to 7 to North Carolina AT. As we get another look, Adams fights his way into the end zone. Norfolk State worked its way all the way down the field. Aided by a penalty on fourth down on the punting situation. Spartans turned that into six on the Adams touchdown run. Tamon Cook. Short kickoff, fielded by North Carolina A&T. And the Aggies will have solid field position to begin this drive. Tamon Cook was the one who fielded it. And the Aggies will begin from their own 34-yard line. We'll see how the Aggies respond after allowing a touchdown the defensive side of the football, 417 left before the half. You know the Aggies can run the ball and try to run out the rest of that first half clock and end it with points. Four seventeen to go here in the second. Fowler will work from the shotgun. The handoff to Tootin. He spins out of trouble and now is being carried. To the 45 yard line, a Spartan's helmet flew off and Bashal Tootin just refused to go down. Yeah, Tootin spins out of one tackle, goes airborne. See that spin move there by Tootin. Norfolk defender got a gang tackle him to bring him down. And they still didn't. <laughs> they just placed him down gently on his cleats. What a run by Tootin there. I don't think I've ever seen that before. He was being carried around like King Tootin. The throw to Leslie. And that one is complete to the 34-yard line. I saw what you did there, pardon me. Carried around like King Tootin. I saw what you did there. There's Zach Leslie again coming off of two straight games where he had two touchdown receptions. Finding a soft spot in that zone defense over the middle, making a big first down catch for the Aggies. The Spartan 34. Response is everything in the game of football. When your opponent puts points on the board, how do you respond? Aggies have the opportunity now. 
run out the rest of the first half clock. North Carolina A&T last week got the ball back with 6.06 left in the fourth quarter and took the clock all the way down to triple zeros. You love to see that if you're an offensive line coach because you know it's all about creating space at the point of attack, being able to run the football, being able to control the clock. And when you got running backs, a stable of running backs led by two like North Carolina A&T, you can do just that. Second down for North Carolina A&T. Play action. Fowler looking. Heaves this one down the sideline to Leslie, and it slips out of his hands. It would have been good for a touchdown. Two passes now just long from Fowler to his receivers. Miss Caldwell earlier this time. Leslie down the left sideline just a bit too long. May have stepped out of bounds after the catch, but it would have been a big first down pickup. Those are plays where you look back in film session and you just hate that you couldn't connect on that one. It'll bring up third and eight. And now movement on the offensive line. False start. Number 63. Hadn't seen a lot offense. of pre-snap penalties from penalty. either team Third in this down. ball game. Been a pretty clean ball game thus far. That's going to back up North Carolina a and even more, make this third and long situation that more difficult. Well, this is when you have to wonder if missing Cesar Minaro as their center this week played a role in that one. There looked to be a lot of confusion along the offensive line as all five guys were looking at each other and put their hands up. Well, it definitely is going to make a difference, Monaro, the quarterback of that O-line. And it's making a difference in the run game as well. a and not able to dominate like they usually do. Third and 13. Fowler, plenty of time, drops it off. And Cook could not hold on to it. Fowler's pass is incomplete. Brings up fourth down. It'll put a four in the box, and that'll be a drive killer. And that's a win for Norfolk State after giving up that big play. The Aggies looked like they were poised to maybe get down the field, score a touchdown, but Brickhouse is out on the field. We mentioned it. Big leg for Caleb Brickhouse. He's trying to put points on the board for the Aggies. Andrew Brown, it will be a 54-yard attempt. And it is no good. Wide left. The wide had the left. leg, though. Well, you see the wind blowing Time from out. right to left, and it carried that ball. Big win by the Spartans' defense. The Spartans hold them. We're back after this.
21 to 7. Norfolk State trailing. We'll get the ball back here with 2.23 to go in the second quarter, and the Spartans deferred on the opening kickoff, so Norfolk State will get the ball back in the second half, and there's some movement on the offensive line. The ball was not snapped, and that will set NSU back five yards. So, ball start, number 55. When you think about it, five if the Spartans, first down. with just one timeout remaining here, can figure out a way to get down the field and at least into field goal range, the entire complexion of this game changes. This is an important drive offensively for Norfolk State. Defensively right now, they get they feel pretty good about themselves after that last stop. And if you can get any points, touchdown preferably before the half, getting the ball back in the second half, you take a little bit of momentum into the locker room. The Spartans elect to keep this one on the ground. It's Jordan Lennon, the freshman, on the carry. Bring up second and 11. How do you manage this last two minutes? You're the Spartans. Don't want to give A&T the ball back, but you want to score points. Adams over the middle. That one is complete to Daquan Felton. And the Spartans are in the hurry up. Big play there by Felton. A ton of yards after the catch on that reception. Spartans are in business. a and giving up a lot of room on those receivers. Adams sees it. And will play the short game. Nice catch there. By Talbert. Tackled by Jacob Roberts. And Roberts, you know, trying to lay it on him a little bit to more and more time off the clock. Adams rolling out. He gets popped. And that one will fall incomplete. His helmet came off. Pass is incomplete. And he's going to have to come off of the field losing that hat. It's third. A nice pop there by King. I don't know if we can get a replay on that one, but that's how you hit and not get called for targeting. Here you see King searching. Shoulder to chest. Big hit by Taekwon King. That'll put Coons back into the game. Spartans offense was able to move with Jones at quarterback. Coons pressed back into action. On the run. The heave down the sideline and completes the touchdown pass to Pride. Is complete. Big play. By Pride, he's made a couple of big-time catches in this ball game. This time, just fooled the defense. Coon sprints out to the right. Not quite sure what the secondary of the Aggies were thinking there. Pride wide open down the field for the easy touchdown, and we got a ball game, people. 21-13, 1-14 to go here in the second. As Grandin Wilcox will come on for the extra point. He'll punch it through. And the Spartans are down seven. This is why you don't look at records. Coming into the ball game, Norfolk State, one and seven. The Aggies, five straight wins. You would think on paper that this would be a blowout, and it looked like it was on its way to that 21-0. Aggies had the lead, but Spartans have found a way to fight back and get back into the ballgame. If there is a team that should know that you're not out of it, especially in the first half, it would be North Carolina a &T. Came down from 18 back at the half last week, able to beat Campbell to be in control of its own destiny here down the stretch in the Big South with two games in conference play remaining home against Charleston Southern next week the week after at Gardner Webb so when you talk about putting a team out of it Campbell scored 28 first quarter points against the Aggies just a week ago well partner it was 21 to 0 in this ball game fourth down punting situation for Norfolk State that penalty was the catalyst for the drive that ultimately got seven points for the Spartans Missed field goal by A&T. 
Spartans get down the field. Big play by Pride for the touchdown reception. You look up at the scoreboard, it's a one-score game. Hey, they only got 10? They just got 10? All right, he's all right, got a four on that side now. Don't Jimmy's look now, four. a quick scoreboard right, check. Charleston Southern leading Robert Morris 20-7 to with 106 to go in the second quarter. Later on today, Campbell will play Bryant. Big return by Aaron Harris. Harris on the return, stop made by number 37, Caleb. And Aaron Harris, first time he's able to touch the ball on a kick return today. Explosive return, man, for the Aggies. Important drive here for a and Do you run out? Do you run it out? Try to just get into the locker room and make your adjustments? Or do you be aggressive? Try to put points on the board before the half. Norfolk State is back into this ball game. You don't want to make a mistake being aggressive and give the Spartans an opportunity with a short field. Decisions, decisions. And that's why, as a coach, you make the big bucks. So Jalen Fowler will get to work here with 109 to go. Looking, looking, drops it off. He's got Tootin, takes his time. Some blocks set him up, and penalty flag is on the field at the 31. This one is probably coming back. Nice thought process to run a screen from the first play. Holding, number 55, but offense. It's come back with a holding penalty. penalty. Repeat first down. That one against Dak Wilson, the center today. Now you mentioned it. Penalties, penalties, penalties. And the Aggies had played a relatively clean game up until the substitution penalty that extended the drive for Norfolk State. And since then, it's been a barrage of penalties on the North Carolina A&T side. First down and 20 from the Aggies at their 22. A&T this season, one and one against teams from the MEAC. Here's Tootin. He'll break free from a few tackles and is brought down at the 39. When in doubt, and excuse me, that is down to the 34. Timeout. When in doubt, you just hand it to number 33. He'll get the job done. Well, Tootin's tough. Tough to bring down. Good combination of power and speed. Not a big guy. Only listed at about 5'11", 195, so he's not huge, but hard to tackle. And once he gets in the open field, he has the speed to go to distance. So 42 seconds left. Timeout was just taken, which means there's two remaining for North Carolina a &T. It's second down. You probably can air it out on this play, and then you have to make a decision. Do you just keep it on the ground for third down and run this thing out and know that Norfolk State is getting the ball back? to begin the second half, or do you test fate? Well, the Aggies have had almost success through the air. Just two long passes away from two touchdowns from Fowler at the quarterback position. So here you look at the replay, Tootin breaking tackles like he normally does. Could have been a face mask there. Referees missed one. He's such a strong runner. Just keeps his feet churning. Got a lot of that penalty yardage back. Play action. Fowler surveying. Throws. That one is complete down to the 40-yard line. It's Tamon Cook getting in on the action. Yeah, Cook runs that seam route on all goes and just settles down in that defense, makes a big catch. Again with the play action. Fowler. This time connects with Leslie. He's at the 10 and is brought down. Aggies offense, after a little bit of lull here in the second quarter, have decided to wake up. Big catch by Leslie. And a timeout, timeout. taken by North Carolina a and with 22 For seconds second to go. Half. So the Aggies with one remaining. And now you're in business if you're the Aggies. In the blink of an eye. After that holding penalty, Tootin got about 12 yards on the carry. Big catch by Cook here. Zach Leslie selling down in the middle of that zone defense. Big play for Leslie on the pitch and catch from Fowler. And now you look up, Aggies in prime position, not only to just put points on the board, but to get into the end zone. 
So North Carolina A&T will operate first and goal from the nine. And as, a seven. as a coach here, I mean to cut you off, partner. As a yeah, coach yeah. here, how aggressive are you? Do you run a couple fades? With the field goal, you make the score uneven. And coaches love uneven scores. Two score games. You, you, you're in position to have a two score game regardless of if you don't gain another yard here. You probably throw a couple of times because you don't want to have to burn your time out in case you need it to set up a field goal. But you also have a guy in Bashal Tudin who's seen the end zone twice so far today. Fowler through the air, throws it behind his receiver. That one is caught. And it is complete to Leslie. Timeout. And Tudin was Four open on the wheel route. You just Your mentioned his name. Final Had a step or two seconds. on the, the defender. Fowler decides to. Dump it off to Leslie. Aggies have to burn that last time out. 15 seconds left now. If you if you want to throw a pass, it has to be in the end zone. You have to go to the end zone. And you can't take a sack. Correct. You have to either throw it away or throw it to the end zone. It will be second and goal. You got several 6'3", 6'4", receivers if you're North Carolina A&T. Here's a jump ball situation where you don't mind just lobbing it up and letting your receivers attack the football and try to moss somebody. Well, Zach Leslie did just that a week ago. Romello Kimbrough is in. We saw him a few weeks ago grab a wheel route and take it about 15 yards. Aggies have options offensively here. You look at that single coverage on the short side of the field. For Leslie. Second and goal from the seven. Fowler. Quick fade. And that one will fall incomplete. No flag on the play, I'm assuming, because the ball was deemed uncatchable. That has to be the reason why there was no pass interference because there was a lot of contact there. But you run a fade route to probably the smallest receiver that you got on the field. You got Leslie and Caldwell out there, 6'3", 6'4". Caldwell on the short side of the field with single coverage. Over there, you got Leslie in the slot. Want to throw it up to one of your taller receivers trying to get a favorable matchup. And here's where the catch that Zach Leslie made was brought down early hurts you because you can't hand the ball off to Bashal Tudin because you don't have a timeout. Here's Fowler. Looking, looking, looking. He is flush from the pocket, throws, and completes it in the end zone. Nice play by Fowler. Tootin was open immediately on that play. Fowler didn't look his way. Flushed in the pocket, almost at the line of scrimmage. Just saw Tootin last second. Here you see him a replay. Fowler looking to the left exclusively, comes back to the right, thinks about running it, but he sees Tootin all alone in the end zone and running. And catching, Bayshaw rooting tooting for the touchdown. And North Carolina A&T has seen Bashal Tootin find the end zone multiple times today. The Aggies, that touchdown really gives them a good feeling going into the locker room. It was gonna, it still may be choice word from that coaching staff for the Aggies players, but that touchdown really gives them a good feeling going into the break. And if you're the Spartans of Norfolk State, you still are feeling good about yourselves. It's a two-score game, but you've shown that you can move the football. Andrew Brown punches through the PAT. It's good. And a lot of words starting to be exchanged between these two ball clubs out on the field. Old CIAA rivals, old MEAC rivals. Aggies now in the Big South. Spartans still in the MEAC, but again, it's like when you see an a old girlfriend, a boyfriend, you were in love with them at one point, and now you can't stand them that type of relationship. I got to tell you, I don't know if there was ever really a lot of love between these two. <laughs> well, let's there was say respect. respect. Let's say respect. I don't think there was love, but there was <laughs> definitely some respect between the two institutions. 
Yeah, and Norfolk State, they've come into Truist Stadium with the mindset like, hey, we're one and seven. Our record, let, let's not let that indicate how we play today's football game. And they've done that, got down 21 to zero, but showed a ton of heart and fortitude in coming back. It was 21-14 before that Tootin touchdown reception. So if you're Norfolk State, you're squarely in this ballgame. Dawson Odom said earlier this week at his press conference that we're going to have to play like bullies if we want to win this game. They have to come physically ready to play. The Aggies have bullied their last five opponents tuning that five-game win streak coming into this one. Squib kick. And that will do it for the first half. North Carolina A&T leads it 28-14 here in Greensboro against Norfolk State. It's halftime at Truist Stadium. We're back after this on ESPN+. Plus.
with you here at Truist Stadium. Spencer Turkin, Damian Banks. It's 28-14, North Carolina a and leading Norfolk State at the half. And I got to tell you, partner, penalties put Norfolk State right back into this ballgame. Interesting first half, to say the least. Aggies out to a 21-0 lead. Norfolk State was punting. Fourth down. Penalty kept the drive alive. They scored a touchdown. They scored another touchdown. Now it's a ball game. Uh, it certainly was. And North Carolina a and with a critical touchdown at the end of the first half. Without those seven points, Norfolk State gets the ball back here because they deferred the opening kickoff. And now it's a seven-point game, and the Spartans would have a chance to tie. So those seven points prevent that from being the situation. And North Carolina a and with a little bit of breathing room heading into the locker room. Now you come back out. The Spartans get the ball back. How important is this defensive stand for North Carolina a and Well, the Aggies have to create a three and out or possibly a turnover situation. Norfolk State has confidence now. They've scored two touchdowns, only coming into the game averaging 13 points. So they've exceeded that 
already in the ball game. Imperative that the Aggies get off the field defensively. Norfolk State, a much different team since inserting Jalen Adams in as the quarterback. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of our first half highlights. Bashal Tootin was able to find the end zone on multiple occasions in the first half. Well, Bashal Tootin heck of a running back for the Aggies. Here you see Norfolk State here. Coons throwing an interception, and that's one of the plays that got him to the bench. Here you see Coons, though, hooking up with Collie. You'll see more of him later in this package. Lennon had a 100-yard game last week for Norfolk State. He's tattooed on that one. The Aggie defense taking Coons to the ground, and here you see the run game starting to pay dividends for North Carolina A&T. And Bayshaw Tootin is the running back who you have to stop if you're an opponent of the Aggies. Here you see Tootin breaking a tackle, getting into the end zone for the first score for the Aggies. More great defense for ANT. At one point, again, we mentioned 21 to 0 before Norfolk State was able to get on the board. Another Tootin touchdown as he splits the defenders and races to the end zone for six. Interception return for a touchdown here by Big Jake, Jacob Roberts. Second straight week with a pick six for Roberts. And here you see Norfolk State starting to get back into the ball game. Adams fighting his way to the end zone. After Adams had his helmet knocked off, Coon re-enters and finds a wide open Collie down the sideline for a touchdown. But this was a big touchdown before the half. Fowler finding Tootin in the back of that end zone to make it a two-score game heading into the third quarter. Andrew Brown will kick this thing off to Norfolk State. Jalen White is back deep to receive. And the second half is underway here on the east side of Greensboro. And Brown will put that one through the end zone for another touchback this afternoon. So Norfolk State will begin on its own 25-yard line. We'll see if Dawson Odoms, the second-year Spartans head coach, 12th year overall, will go ahead and go back to Coons or stick with Adams as the signal caller. Well, Adams gave your offense a boost there in that second quarter. Coons did come off the bench and toss the touchdown reception, but Adams gives you an option at the quarterback position to run the football. It will be Jalen Adams to begin half number two. Collis Pride at the wide receiver position with the big plays for Norfolk State in the first half. Adams, the keeper, he has a lot of room. He's to midfield, into Aggie territory, at the 20, the 15, and finally dragged down from behind as the Spartans enter the red zone on the first play from scrimmage in half number two. One play, huge game. Adams just standard quarterback draw. The Red Seas open up for Adams, and he shows his speed as he races down the field. Touchdown saving tackle there by the Aggie defense. If not, Adams would have got into the end zone. So very quickly, Norfolk State in striking distance. Janaz Sumter stopped the touchdown for the Aggies. Adams, this time he's brought down in the backfield for a sack. It's Shamari Wallace, the redshirt senior out of Hope Mills, South Carolina, who brought him down. This time Adams flushed to the right, and Wallace tracks him down for the sack. And if you're Norfolk State, you're in the red zone. You've gotten down here. Don't want to settle for a field goal. You want to keep scoring touchdowns. We mentioned coming into the ball game, only averaging about 13 points per game. Right now, exceeding that and in prime position to score more. So it will bring up second and 18 for Norfolk State. Spartans now just on the cusp of the red zone. White on the end around. That door was shut pretty quickly, and he's taken down at the 16. A good defense there. Setting the edge by the Aggies. Nowhere for White to go. Minimum gain there. It's going to bring up big third down and long here for the Spartans. Do you try to get as much as you can to get the field goal closer, or do you take that shot? Spartans have been aggressive thus far in this ballgame. So Adam 
Adams will operate with Kevin King in the backfield with him. Two-step drop. Quarterback keeper, and he's tripped up in the backfield. Sacked again. Well, you see what Adams wants to do. If he senses pressure, he's trying to get out of there and utilize his athleticism to get out of trouble. This time, pocket breaks down. Adams sacked again. Second time on this drive, he's been sacked. Offense is going to stay out on the field. Coach Odoms understands we need touchdowns. We don't need field goals. It's going to be a fourth and about 14. Big play here defensively for the Aggies after giving up that long run on the first play of the third quarter. They can come out of here giving up no points. That's a win for the Aggie defense. All sides on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. And I didn't see a flag out on the field. A, I did not either. But, again, I wear glasses. So do I. wear glasses. Which means that we should be able to see it clearly because we're exactly. both wearing our glasses. Exactly. Big third down, nonetheless, though, for Norfolk State offensively. Have to be wary of Adams' feet in this situation. Third and ten. The fade to the end zone, and it will result in a flag. Yeah, Prunty handsy in the end zone, but, you know, it's a big body receiver. You're just trying to establish position as a defender. Prunty looks like he may be called for his third pass interference of the ball game. And I had to figure that Norfolk State was just going to throw a fade pass pattern. Interference. It's, it's third Defense, long. Number one. Best case scenario, you complete the, the pass the or get a pass line. interference, First which down. they did. Yeah, Prunty locked down corner for North Carolina a t having his hands full out there on an island with been Daquan a, Felton. Been a tough day for the Kansas transfer. Adams from the gun. The fade to the back corner and Pride was out of bounds. Incomplete. Yeah, Collis Pride, nice back shoulder catch but out of bounds on that one. And you see just the, the technique of the wide receivers for Norfolk State waiting to the last minute to try to get their hands up. And you see Collis Pride couldn't get a foot down to secure that catch. Good defense there by the Aggies. Brings up second and goal. A&T's defense will force a third and goal. Good penetration up front on the Aggie D line. Tough sledding in the middle of that line. But again, you always have that ace in the hole. I mean, Adams is at the quarterback position for Norfolk State. In these third down situations, you can always tuck it and run it. Got to be wary of that. North Carolina a &T. Adams, option, tosses it to King. And he can't reach the pylon. The King didn't catch it cleanly, but great pursuit. Uh, the Aggie defense made Adams give it up immediately on the pitch. Roberts showing his range, forcing a fourth and goal situation. Spartans going to go for it. Fourth down, and Norfolk State appears to be lining up with Otto Coons as the quarterback. I think Adams lost his hat once again. He's have, having to come out of the ball game, and Coons is in last time. Coons tossed a touchdown pass. Coons will go under center. Takes it, tucks it, and marches into the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown, Norfolk State. Otto Coons had to play hero twice now 
coming into the ball game as a substitute for Jalen Adams and is able to put points on the board. And that's great push up front by that Spartans offensive line. Coons just keeps his legs driving, gets into the end zone for the Spartans. And again, a one-score ball game. Who would have thunk it coming into today's contest? Norfolk State, one and seven, not playing great football, but they are inspired now and let back into the game by North Carolina a and They're taking full advantage. Wilcox on for the PAT. He'll punch that one through with ease, and it's a seven-point ball game in Greensboro. We'll take a timeout. We're back after this on ESPN+. Plus. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. The B1 Performance Patch elevates physical functions by transforming carbs into glucose used to fuel the body. Don't compete without it. Visit buyb1.com or on social media at B1Patch. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Well, Damien, we've got a ball game. It's 28-21, North Carolina a and leading it here on the east side of Greensboro against former conference foe times two, Norfolk State. Yeah, the game changed when Jalen Adams was inserted at quarterback for Norfolk State and also a penalty extended that first drive where Norfolk State was able to score a touchdown. They had... Lined up for a field goal, called a timeout, got a first down, and scored a touchdown subsequently. Here's Cook. Will take it up the sideline and is angled out of bounds around the 46-yard line. So solid field position for North Carolina a t to begin this drive in its own territory. A lot of speed there by Cook to get around the edge. Well, he can move. He a 4.33 40-yard dash time to his name. Cook in the open field. You're not going to catch him from behind. Now a t starts with great field position. Aggies able to answer after Norfolk State had made it a one-score game late in that first half. Let's see if the Aggies can answer again. Fowler will roll out. Throws to Leslie. And he is wrapped up and brought down by Devin Allen. Coming into the ball game, I looked at Norfolk's defense and them not being able to stop the run, giving up over 225 yards rushing to their opponents per game. But they've done a decent job to solid versus this run attack for the Aggies today. 
Play action. The throw over the middle to Leslie at the 40. He's to the 30 and is brought down. And now a penalty as Leslie gave the first down point directly at a player. And you can't do that as Joseph White will draw the penalty. Zach Leslie frustrated with the way he was brought down. And yeah, you you know, personal do fouls, that. you just can't take them. You know, you can't do that if you're Zach Leslie after making a big catch. You know, you're, like you mentioned before, homecoming. This is his fifth homecoming. He's been around the block. You can't do that if you're a leader on the team. Big play by Leslie, but gives up yardage on the personal foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 19, offense, his first of the game. Yeah, the result Zach of the Leslie. play was a first down. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. It'll be first and 10. So it will be first down. Well, I knew it was going to be a first down, but if you're Zach Leslie, you got to chill for the rest of the ball game. You got one unsportsmanlike. Your next one, you're out of here. At the Spartan 44. I'd like to see the Aggies try to get that run game, that ground and pound going here in this third quarter. Try to pound a and pound the ground with Tootin. Tootin breaks free again, and he's to the 31. That's what Tootin can do, break tackles. You think you got him stopped. He keeps the legs churning, picks up a huge first down for a He's up to 79 yards on the day. Did we mention... He's going for, what is this, his 300th straight 100-yard game? <laughs> Not that many, but he's going for his eighth consecutive one, which so, it, it feels like it. Well, we looked at the stats at halftime. He was like, he, you know, he's, he's at 66. He's at 66, and I'm like, he's a couple of carries away from 100 if you're Tootin. And Tootin can break one long at any time. That one broke some tackles and got a big first down. So Leslie back into the game. Tootin. He'll break a tackle in the backfield, turns downfield, and is pinned down at the 26, but he makes something out of absolutely nothing. Just hard to tackle. Just one of those players where does not go down a per upon first contact normally, and he's just always falling forward for positive yardage. When he is tackled for loss, you, you're very surprised, and you don't lose much when you come in with Graves. The GW Danville product now out on the field. Play action. Fowler connects at the 15. He's got Burkhalter who sling down to the ground at the 6. Yeah, Burkhalter. Play action. The run setting up the pass. Burkhalter secures the catch, gets the first down. More importantly, no showboating, no unsportsmanlike conduct. The Aggies are in business. Goal to go. Romello Kimbrough will be stacked at the bottom of your screen. He's near the 10 yard line. He's the motion man. Graves turns and is into the end zone. Touchdown, North Carolina A&T. And I mentioned it. I'd like to see A&T start to run the ball, ground and pound. It's set up huge chunks of yardage through the air, but when in doubt, keep it on the ground. Graves digs one for the Spartans. Touchdown, A&T. Graves had the game winner a week ago, and he goes in pretty much untouched. And Graves... You look at the care, the amount of carries that he gets per game. Not a, a huge amount of carries per game, but he's an impact player as well. And he's hard to bring down, much like Bayshaw Tootin. Brown, good again on the PAT. And North Carolina A&T extends its lead. 7.34 to go. We're back after these messages here on ESPN+. Plus.
25-21, North Carolina A&T extends its lead over Norfolk State here in the third quarter as we get another look at the Wesley Graves touchdown. Back-to-back weeks that the redshirt freshman has found the promised land. The Graves into the end zone on that carry, but a nice kick-out block by Corian Sharp to free him up. Rinse and repeat. Spartans got to within one touchdown before the half. Aggies responded. Norfolk came out, scored a touchdown. Aggies right back at him. And this one will sail into the end zone for another touchback from Andrew Brown. So the Spartans offense begins this drive from the 25-yard line. to go in the third quarter. If you're in Norfolk State, you still feel good. Feel good that you can move the ball, that you can score points. Now you see Coons back in the game. I'm not sure if Adams was hurt or if Coons has earned his time back, scoring two touchdowns, one through the air, one on the ground. Otto Coons back at the quarterback position. For Norfolk State. He does have two touchdowns to his name today. This one is tossed out to the wing where Felton will earn a first down. Coach pass is complete to number five. And that Norfolk State Spartan offense really using it's enough. both sidelines very well today on offense. Felton out there on an island with Prunty. All you got to do is make Prunty miss, and Felton's a big guy, 6'3, 205. Make one guy miss, pick up a first down. Toss. Lennon brought down after a gain of a couple. Yeah, it's just not going to be a lot of run yards for Lennon today unless he breaks one. Penetration all afternoon long by that front defensively for North Carolina a and Norfolk best chances offensively have been through the air or running the football with Adams at the quarterback position. It'll bring up second down, eight to go. North Carolina a and going with the zone. Here's Talbert. And he's angled out of bounds in Aggie territory. And it's just a numbers game there. Only two defenders for the Aggies on that right side, the, the Aggies' left side, the right side for Norfolk. Coon just throws it out, floods that zone, and picks up an easy first down for the Spartans. First and 10, the handoff goes to Lennon, and he is stopped after barreling forward for a few. Roberts and King in there on the wrap-up. But if you're at Norfolk State, you have to keep running the football. You can't exclusively throw the ball, so you have to keep running it, keep probing. Hopefully, maybe you'll break one eventually, but it keeps the defense honest. You know... Coming into the ball game, they were primarily, much of their success was through the air. So you know they want to throw the football. Quarterback keeper, it's Adams. And he'll spin out, and a flag comes flying in. And it looks like this one will charge forward after a face mask. Now they're just changing out quarterbacks. During the same drive, they being Norfolk State, and Adams re-enters. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 13. A couple Defense. yards on the ground, but 15, 15 penalty, more with the penalty. The end of the run. Face mask. Automatic first down. It'll bring up first and 10 for Norfolk State after the penalty. Five minutes even to go here in the third quarter. 
Adams is going to stay in at the quarterback position, but a trip set to either side of the formation for Norfolk State has been successful on this drive. The handoff to Lennon. Breaks free from the first tackle. He's into the red zone and gets tossed out of bounds. And the Spartans are in business after the Avarian Cole tackle. Lennon's biggest run of the ball game. You split three out to the left. You spread out that Aggie defense, and it creates running lanes for Lennon. And he has to eyes wide open with that hole and gets as much as he can. That's the biggest run of the day for the freshman. So another first down for Norfolk State. Two-step drop. Adams opens up, throws, and completes the pass. Adams, this time just straight drop and pass, and you'll take it four yards. Right now you're matriculating down the field. Getting in that scoring zone, that red zone area. And I mentioned it, I think, ad nauseum coming into the game. Spartans only averaging 13 points a game. They already have 21, so they feel good about themselves and they're able to move the ball on this Aggie defense. Only a gain of a couple on that one. It's going to set up a third and possibly fourth down here. Norfolk. And switching our quarterbacks yet again. So here comes Coons back into the game. Whenever he seems to come in in the red zone, we keep an eye out. That matchup, Felton and Prunty. Somehow, some way, he finds a way to put the ball into the end zone. Let's see what he does here. Coons dropping back, throws towards the end zone, and that one too tall. Good defense there by Cole on the outside. And there's a chop block on the play that's been called. So Sam Washington with a decision here. Do you leave the four in the box or do you back Norfolk State up? And he elects to go ahead and put the Spartans Personal back foul. at the 30. Legal block below the waist. Number 27, offense. Coach Washington yard penalty. believing that. Repeat third down. Third and long situation. They can create an incomplete pass. Chances of the Spartans connecting on a long field goal. Are not all that great, but again, defensively here, this is where you see Norfolk State throughout the ball game throwing those fade routes, trying to create mismatches on the quarter and possibly pick up pass interferences. Third and long, Kuhn stepping up, has some room to operate. He'll throw, and that one will head out of bounds and incomplete. Yeah, excellent pressure up front by that Aggie front, forcing Coons out of the pocket. Once he got out of the pocket, Collis Pride came open late, but Coons couldn't deliver an accurate pass because of the pressure. So the field goal unit will come out for Norfolk State. This one in between the hashes. It'll be a 46 yard field goal attempt into the wind. Be the longest field goal of the season for the Spartans. Three on the play clock. Zero showing, and the Spartans did not get the snap off in time, and a timeout was taken just before the snap. Timeout. And that field goal is going to be no good, so gives Coach Odom some things seconds. to think about. Do you want to go for it? Just throw a fade route, try to get Pray for a miracle. Do you punt it and try to pin the Aggies deep? We'll see.
back with you here in Greensboro. North Carolina a and on top of Norfolk State, 35-21. Brandon Wilcox, the Ocala, Florida native, is on for a 46-yard field goal attempt. Looks like Spartans just want to get some points out of this possession, but it's a long field goal for them. Hold us down, the kick. Has enough leg, and it's good. It's good. Grandin Wilcox with a new long on the season, 46 yards. And it makes it a 35-24 ball game here at True Stadium. Sports is awesome. Coach Odom's called a timeout. They missed the field goal. You iced your kicker into making a field goal. How does that work? Magic. One of those games here between the Aggies and the Spartans. So North Carolina A&T will get the ball back with 2.29 to go here in the third. Bashal Tootin still in pursuit of another 100-yard game. He's about 21 yards away. Would make it eight consecutive ball games over the century mark on the ground. If you're in Norfolk State, you'll take those three points. Continue to apply pressure Game pressure, that is, to North Carolina a and And I mentioned it a couple times. You just want to hang around and give yourself a chance in the fourth quarter. You're definitely in this ball game. You're a turnover away by your defense from really having a chance to pull it out at the end. But you got to stop a and offense. They've last couple of drives have got their way down the field relatively easily to score touchdowns. Right now, defensively, Norfolk State has to step up. The Sun making its first true appearance on the day as Wilcox will kick that one out of bounds. And that will result in an legal procedure. Yeah, mistake there on special teams as Wilcox kicks it out of bounds. Free yardage for the Aggies. You mentioned Tootin. I think a heavy dose of Bayshow Tootin is in order for the Aggies on this upcoming Appreciate drive. Out Just to get you team. out of the third quarter and into the, the fourth, yard line. set yourself first up down. to score points. It'll be first and 10 for North Carolina a and from the 35. And I got to tell you, I don't know if I'm convinced that that was a mistake. North Carolina a and return game, for the most part, has had the Aggies north of the 35 to start drives this afternoon and that way nobody squeaks through true but why not just squib it down the field I mean you kick it out of bounds you still have great there's still great field position at the 35 and you haven't shown that you can stop a and in these last three four drives the handoff and Tootin able to do what he does and the Start the drive with a gain of six. And Tootin, that they'll take it. He averages 6.9 yards per carry coming into this matchup. Hand the ball off to your talented stud running back and pick up first downs. Fowler opens up. And Leslie tried to maneuver north before he had full control. That could be big. It's going to set up a third down here. And Norfolk State is looking for a stop defensively after getting six by Tootin on that first down carry. Aggies elected to put the ball in the air. And with that drop pass, going to be a big third down situation here. a t will line up four receivers. Marquise Hall was showing pressure there from the middle linebacker position. I think Spartans want to Two on the play clock. Come after this one. And we'll see if a timeout was burned. Believe it was taken. And it will be a timeout. Before North the play Carolina clock expired. Timeout. North so Carolina that will prevent A&T. the penalty for the delay of game. Half. Both teams seconds. with two timeouts remaining. Here in half number two. So if you're North Carolina A&T, you're facing third and four. You have a running back that averages almost seven yards a carry. Do you just hand it to 
number 33 and see what he can do? Well, you, I wouldn't just hand it to him schematically. You can spread out the Spartan defense and create space and opportunity for two. I mean, you just don't want to line up and like, hey, we're handing the ball off. But schematically and formation-wise, you can create some space to get him out in space, and you know he can do the rest. But the Aggies have had a lot of success through the air in this ball game. I wouldn't be surprised if they let Jalen Fowler throw it here. Fowler under pressure. Throws, completes the pass, and a first down is earned and more by Leslie. He's into the red zone. A flag comes flying in, and he falls forward into the end zone. But this one is coming back. Maybe a block in the back down the field, but Leslie showing that long stride. And that was about 60 yards of yak by Zach Leslie. It's going to be a first down. It just depends on where the block in the back block was. in the back. From 85, offense. 15-yard penalty. Be first to 10. It's going to be a penalty from the spot of the foul. It's still going to be first down, but it takes away a lot of yak for Zach Leslie. And that touchdown as well because he got to the end zone at the end. Zach Leslie. Over 100 yards receiving in the ball game today. He's been phenomenal since he's come back. Yeah, Leslie, these last two ball games prior to today, two touchdown catches at Robert Morris, two touchdown catches last week, homecoming game versus Campbell, and balling out once again today. So first and 10 for North Carolina A&T. From the 35 of Norfolk State. Pump fake. Fowler. Another flag gets dropped on the field, and Fowler will angle himself out of bounds around the 30. And Fowler had a lot of time back there, but maybe because of a penalty, gets out of the pocket. That right side scoops out of bounds. Holding, number 63. That's going to come back with the holding penalty. Penalty. Repeat first down. That hold on Ricky Lee, the third. will now be first and 20 for North Carolina a and Still on the NSU side of the field. The Aggies going backwards these last couple of plays. Showing the It'll be first down. pension for big plays in this ball game. a and one of the most penalized teams in the country. I was 108. just about to say it. Repeatedly shooting themselves in the foot. Not with a 38, probably with a 6 hour. Two on the play clock. And now another timeout burned. Timeout. North Carolina ET. Their second and a half. 30 seconds. Another timeout called. Now ANT only one timeout. They are still leading this game. It's a two-score ball game, but it feels like Norfolk State is right there. The Aggies, they've been able to answer on each occasion when Norfolk State has scored points. So this is a critical drive for the Aggies offensively and Spartans what they want to do, hang around hang around, wait for the Aggies to make some mistakes, they've made quite a bit in this ball game and they're taking advantage of it, only down by 11 points now North Carolina a t Averaging 72.3 penalty yards a game. I think they've exceeded that in this ball game today. And that's something as a coach, you hate penalties, but you hate drive-killing penalties as well. Kimbrough is the motion man. Fowler will hand it off to Tootin. Not a lot of room to run. And only gain a few. And this time... Spartan defense up to the challenge. Stopping Tootin before he gets going. Short gain there of a talented back. Brings up second down and 17. Aggies in no rush looking to the sideline for the play call. Wouldn't be surprised again if Fowler, he's been doing well through the air this afternoon. Mm -hmm. 
Fowler has time, heaves this one down the numbers, and it'll fall incomplete. Tamon Cook was the intended target. The Cook streaking down that right sideline. Stride for stride. But Cook down that sideline. It's an incomplete pass, gonna be third and long here. For the Aggies and just back to being quiet in the stadium. These are situations in the ball game like, hey, someone needs to make a play. For North Carolina a and and Norfolk State, someone needs to make a play defensively. Fowler has a man in his face, fumbles the football, and Norfolk State has it. That's the big play on defense that the Spartans have been waiting for. Fowler has had a lot of time back there throughout the day to throw, this time coming on a blitz. No one picks up the blitzing linebacker. It was Marquise Hall. Marquise Hall, the redshirt senior from Woodridge, Virginia. Potomac Senior High School makes a big play when the Spartans need it the most. Anthony Bloom fell on the football. And the Spartans are in business with 16 ticks of the clock to go here in the third. And these two teams are old rivals in a previous conference. And it's just like having a, a little brother. When you move up, if you let your little brother hang around long enough, eventually he may beat you. Adams is the QB. He'll hand the ball off. And that AT defense doesn't allow White to really go anywhere. And that will do it for the third quarter of action here on the east side of Greensboro. North Carolina AT on top 35 24 as we head to the fourth. We're back after these messages on ESPN. There's over 450 million Hoopers out there. One will outscore the country and put Norman on the map. Less than 1% of high school players get a scholarship. Odds a freshman will lead the nation in points and assists? One and never been done. 1.3% of college players get drafted. Only one will drop 48 and 11 in the conference finals. One will know this is just the beginning. Trey had a one and a half billion chance to get here, but he saw a possibility. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. The B1 Performance Patch elevates physical functions by transforming carbs into glucose used to fuel the body. Don't compete without it. Visit buyb1.com or on social media at B1 Patch. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we try and educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen 
and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road. Helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Back with you here in Greensboro, North Carolina. It is Norfolk State football. 15 minutes to go. Big play here defensively for a &T. You got Adams at the quarterback position for the Spartans. Got to be play Larry action. Of his legs. Adams pass is complete. And that play was snuffed out immediately by the Aggie defense. Third and long situation here. Ikeem right on the reception. It'll bring up third and seven for Norfolk State. Felton Prunty matchup. In the bottom of your screen. Spartans two of 11 on third down today. Three step drop, Adams. Cannot connect with his receiver and that will Put a four in the box as Tremaine Talbert couldn't haul it in. And Talbert, he had an opportunity to come down with the catch. Would have been a heck of a grab. Hit the ground and not able to secure the football. That's a big stop defensively for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Norfolk State opportunity here to pin the Aggies deep. Back to receive for the Aggies. And play defense and, and try to create another turnover. Roll out punt. And this one will trickle into the end zone for a touchback. Now offensively mentioned Tootin. This is Tootin time here. Fourth quarter. Offensive line play. It's been touch and go in this ball game for North Carolina a and but you're in the fourth quarter now. You're a running football team. Now it's time to show your opponent, like, hey, mano y mano, we can push you around. You got the running back to do that. Have you see the great camera work by our production crew getting the big ugly some camera time. I, I try not to call them big ugly. I try to call them dancing bears. <laughs> You got to be light on your feet to play offensive line. A lot of folks don't, don't think you have to be light on your feet, but you do. First and 10 from 20. Graves is stopped in the backfield. Quick check of the Big South scoreboard. Charleston Southern leading Robert Morris 34-14 with 11.06 to go on the fourth. And early in the second quarter, Bryant leading Campbell up in Rhode Island, 13-3. to We saw Campbell here last week scoring points, you know, in a blink of an eye. And now to see them just one week later with only three points, Bryant playing a good game at home. Second and 11. Fowler floats this one towards the sideline, and Burkhalter is able to bring it in for the reception. He's up to the 27-yard line. That one kind of wobbled out to Burkhalter out of the hands of Jalen Fowler. He's going to set up a third and very manageable here. Can run the football if you choose to. Fowler's had a lot of success throwing the ball throughout this ball game, though. 19 of 28 on the day. Fowler. Tucks it, runs it, and he is stopped short of the first down marker. So now it's fourth down, and the punt unit will come on. One big defensive stop deserves another as the Spartans, Norfolk State, force a 
hunting situation here for North Carolina a and The Spartans have been up to the test. Ever since they got down 21-0, they've shown that they can hang with the big dogs. Big dogs mean North Carolina a and Fowler comes up limping off the field. Brickhouse shanks that one. It will roll into a &T territory. Brickhouse was just trying to get the punt off. It was a lot of pressure. I think he felt that Media. pressure and it Time affected out. his technique. We'll take a timeout here in Greensboro. We're back after this on ESPN+. Plus. Back with you here in Greensboro. Fans made their way out. What ended up being a beautiful day here on the east side of town. Norfolk State with tremendous field position to begin this crucial drive. It'll be first and 10 from the 46 of North Carolina A&T. And there's movement all over the place. It'll be a false start against Norfolk State. False start. Free snap penalties are offense. The coach's worst first nightmare. Down. And this is going to back up the Spartans. And what is a crucial drive here. Still plenty of time left in the ball game, but the Aggies have left the door open for you if you're Norfolk State to, to get back into this ball game even more. You have to take advantage of it. The Bartons now will work from their own side of the field. Adams on the run. And he's tripped up at the 41. Adams on the keeper. Adams using his feet. Looks like that was a design quarterback run. He's athletic back there at that quarterback position. Has gotten himself out of trouble all afternoon long. Robert Porsche just came off the field holding his left elbow. Otto Coons, now quarterback. Coons back into the game. Second and five. Play action. That one batted up. Still a free ball, and it's picked up by Prunty. You know when it's a tip drill. Someone is going to come down with that football. And it was the Aggies who came the down with that one. Big play. Is it interception a critical moment defense. in this ball game. Coon gets it out there. Laney all over. The wide receiver touches about eight different hands before 
Karan Prunty is able to come down with it for the interception. Prunty's third interception of the season. The hand-eye coordination on that one was tremendous. And Jalen Fowler is going to come back out and lead the offense. He was just being checked out on the sideline by the medical staff. So we'll see how he reacts on this drive. And Fowler back in the ball game, but if I'm the Aggies, I'm giving the ball to Tootin here. And I'm telling our offensive line to block, maybe block. He's the motion man. Pump fake, the toss out to Tootin. He'll turn upfield and get back to the line of scrimmage. To 33, Basel Tootin. It was a very, very long handoff, glorified long handoff for Tootin. He was able to come down with that reception. Lost yards on the play, though. It'll be a loss of one, second and 11. Tootin with 92 yards on the ground. I feel like Tootin's due for another big run before the end of this ball game. Takes the handoff and is across the 40 to the 43. So that'll be a pickup of six. So he's up to 98 yards now. Well, good gain on that play. And what that does is put you in a position where you can either run the ball here on third down if you would like to, or you can throw the football. I got to be under the assumption that, hey, man, let's just give the ball to Bayshaw Tootin. Let's block up front. Let's let Tootin do what he does. The illegal procedure will be the call. Ball starts. Number 71, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Now that puts you in a position where third and long, you're going to have to put the ball in the air. Try to find a mismatch on the outside. Take advantage of your big wide receivers. Fowler's had some, a lot of success. Finding Leslie over the middle. See what the Aggies come up with here on third and long. A&T will work with trips to the bottom of your screen. Fowler dropping back. Pressure on. Throws. That one is complete, and it'll be awfully close to the first down marker. The initial spot is short. And now you got a decision to make if you're the Aggies. I'm going for it. You need one yard, a half a yard. You got a huge quarterback, a big running back. Fowler's going to go for it quickly. And the QB sneak is successful. That's a first down. Yeah, I don't get paid a lot to do what I do. But you got to go for it on fourth and short. If you're a and in that situation, score a touchdown on this drive, take a lot of time off the clock, you can breathe a little bit easier if you're the Aggies. Next mission is to get Tootin to the century mark if you're the A&T. And he did it on that carry. So Bashal Tootin now, as long as he doesn't go backwards, will have his eighth straight 100-yard rushing game. That's a lot of time left in the ball game. But if you're A&T, this drive could essentially seal it for you if you play it right, run the football, drain that clock, keep it on the ground, throw it if you have to, really take advantage of that O-line and run Bashal Tootin. A week ago, Campbell, with three timeouts, gave a and the football back with 6.06 to go in the fourth quarter, and the Aggies were able to hold on to it for the rest of the ball game. And you know why? Because the Aggies were able to run the football, but give Norfolk State credit here. Although Tootin has crossed the century mark, they've done a pretty decent job of holding this Aggie run game in check. Personnel, you are needed at the 50-yard line in the Aggie stands. Any medical personnel is requested around the 50-yard line on the Aggie stands. Big third down here for North Carolina A&T. Fowler 
to the sideline, and that one will fall incomplete. Aggie's not able to convert there. They're going to have to punt this ball away to Norfolk State. So that's a win for the Spartan defense. Brings up fourth down for the Aggies. Creating a fourth down punting situation. Brickhouse. Goal is to try to pin Spartans deep. Brickhouse didn't have a great punt his last time out. A lot of pressure. Just like Norfolk is lining up trying to come after this one as well. Short snap. This time he absolutely boots it. And the coverage unit was there to take down Talbert. Well, Talbert took a chance. Gorgeous. Brickhouse. Media timeout. No gain for Talbert on the return. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road. Helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Whether you're a contractor or do-it-yourselfer, Sunbelt Rentals is committed to making it easy to get the tools and equipment you need. With a vast network of locations across the U.S. and Canada, no one brings more yes to your project. Our broad inventory and dedicated team of experts makes equipment rental absolutely available, positively reliable, and unquestionably easy. Visit sunbeltrentals.com to reserve your equipment or find a location near you. Go Lighting. We make it happen. First and 10 for Norfolk State from its own seven yard line with 7.20 to go. North Carolina AT leads at 35 24. Here at Truist Stadium, Jalen Adams is in at quarterback for the green and gold. Adams opens up. And that one will fall incomplete at the hash marks. It was Aaron Harris in on the coverage? Good coverage there by Harris. Collis Pride and Norfolk State Aaron wants to score a touchdown here. They're going to have to go about 95 yards, 96 yards to get there. Going to have to take some shots down the field. A&T plays sound defense in that secondary and make the Spartans work for it. Well, it's an interesting situation now for Dawson Odoms and the Spartans because the quarterback who can really throw it down the field is Otto Coons. But the guy who's helped you get back into this game is Jalen Adams. So you have decisions to make. Adams is flushed from the pocket and is dragged into the end zone. They'll give him the spot, though, at the one-yard line. So he avoids the safety for now. Yeah, we mentioned Adams has really helped out this Norfolk State offense by running the football from his quarterback position, but this time he runs into the sack here. You see pressure up front per use. Adams, happy feet, runs into the sack and looked like it could have been a safety. Caleb Jones was all over that, the freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia. So from that Tidewater region, you know that he knows a lot of these guys. 
Yeah, that's home for him. Norfolk Tide Water, that Chesapeake, Norfolk Tide, Portsmouth, Virginia Beach, that whole area. Two on the play clock. Adams from the end zone completes that pass at the two. And here comes Tolbert, who somehow breaks free from that monster hit from Roberts, and then he is wrapped up and brought down by the Charlotte, North Carolina native. Yeah, Tolbert didn't go down on that contact, but guarantee you he's feeling that shot that big play Jake put on him. Heck of an effort, hole from Tolbert. Roberts lowers that boom. Tolbert bounces off, but Roberts still makes the shoestring tackle. Is going to force a punt here for Norfolk. The heels of the punter are on the back line of that end zone, so regardless, it's going to be great field position for North Carolina a &T. Almost blocked. High, spinning punt. Fielded by Rucker at midfield. He's got some room to operate and will be brought down shy of the 25. So, great field position for North Carolina A&T to go to work on the other side of this timeout. We're back after these messages on ESPN+. Plus. Thirty-five twenty-four. A&T leads it. It's time for the Hercules Tires strong move of the game. And here's Bashal Tootin. He's getting carried out on the field. Can't bring him down. That's Tootin, the, he runs hard. Yeah, he sure does. That's the Hercules Tires strong move of the game. As Jalen Fowler will split out wide. And there was movement on the offensive line. And that was the same play that Tootin scored on in the first half, Fowler. False start. Number 59. Motion, direct Offense. snap to Tootin. Five-yard penalty. This time it's a pre-snap penalty, but expect a heavy dose of Tootin here in his last 520. To secure Please the victory the for A&T. To 521. 521. Clock will go back to 521. Thank you. I'm the Aggies. I run the exact same play. I'm giving the ball. I'm handing the ball off to Tootin at worst. Make Norfolk State use their remaining timeouts. Tootin. Oh, we'll just about get back to the original set of sticks. Norfolk State with two timeouts remaining. Spartans trying to preserve those timeouts, but they're not going to help you 
the A&T scores on this possession, you know they're going to be running the football with Tutu to try to make you use those TOs. Option play. The throw. That one complete to Dobson, and he reaches for the pylon, but he steps out of bounds. What a play call by O.C. Barnett. Play action fake off Tootin. Sneaks the tight end down the right seam. Fowler places it gently over that right shoulder. Almost a touchdown, but stepped out at about the four-yard line. Excellent play call there by the Aggies. Nicholas Dobson has come up huge for the Aggies at really important moments this season. I mean, it whistles all over the field. And that catch is not as easy as it looks. These players just Time make out. it look easy sometimes. Go for State. She's running full speed over that shoulder. Excellent place pass there by Fowler. Set up a first and goal situation for the Aggies. Timeout taken by Norfolk State. With the clock stopped. I'm not sure if they were didn't like what they saw on defense. Ten people on the field, I was just told. Again, I'm... I guess they didn't like what they saw on defense. <laughs> it happens. Listen, you North Carolina a and had a couple of plays of last story. week where they only had 10 guys in the field, but they got lucky and made a couple of stops. That's the art of being vague and being right at the same time. <laughs> if, you're, if you're very vague in your response and your statements, you can be right a lot of the time. Pro tip, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Aggie scored touchdown here. And... Maybe all she wrote in this ball game. Graves stopped back at the five. And Graves has come in in these goal line situations and been that goal line back for the Aggies. Scored a touchdown in this ball game. Stopped there. Bring up second down and goal to go for no gain. From the Spartan five. She got. Burkhalter split out there wide. It's just so enticing in that one-on-one -on -one coverage just to see if Burkhalter can beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. Fowler can get the ball out to him. Second and goal. Kimbrough the motion man. The handoff to Graves. And he is Third taken five. down at the two. Wesley Graves. Graves inches ever closer to that goal line. Now with the Aggies. Running that ball is running that clock as well. Norfolk State, not a lot of options to stop it. Just, I don't want to say Coach Odom's wasted a timeout a couple of, about a minute ago, but, you know, he did use a timeout with the clock stopped. Did have 10 men on the field, but. I don't think that was his situation. preferred moment to use it. <laughs> 10 men on the field needed to call a timeout. Fowler drops it off, and into the end zone goes Kimbrough. Play action fake. Gets him every time around that goal line, and the art, the lost art of throwing to the fullback as Kimbrough is wide open for that touchdown reception. So Romello Kimbrough with his first touchdown of the season, the Morgan State transfer. And all that blocking finally paid off for the big fella. That's an excellent job by O.C. Chris Barnett. Not only scoring a touchdown there, but keeping Kimbrough happy. You got to keep those fullbacks engaged, man. They don't get a lot of carries, although Kimbrough does get a few carries, and they certainly in today's football don't get a lot of catches. Brown good on the extra point. The Aggies in control here down the stretch, 42-24. We're back after this on ESPN+. Plus.
42-24, 2.42 to go here in the fourth. A&T leads Norfolk State, and that last touchdown by Kimbrough may have sealed the deal here in Greensboro. Yeah, Kimbrough off the play-action pass when everyone in the stadium thought that it was going to be a run play. Kimbrough wide open in the flats for the touchdown. That's the cushion, I believe, that the Aggies will need to get out of here with a win. Quick check of the Big South scoreboard. Robert Morris trailing Charleston Southern 34-21 with a buck 40 to go. And how about this, folks? Bryant on top of Campbell, 27-3 with 5-12 to go in the second. Goes to show you, partner, week by week, you can get got in college football. And here comes Norfolk State. White will get angled out. That was a huge return. The first chance that the Spartans have had to return a football, and Jalen White makes him pay. As you said, Jaylen Damian, White at some there. point, they hey, were going to take one out of the end zone. Jalen White has been chomping at the bits, and he's a redshirt freshman, so you know he wants to return the, at least one. And the one opportunity that he got... Really good return for the Spartans. Now, this game is not over. You know, it's a far stretch. It would take a lot of things, everything going right right for Norfolk to come back. But, hey, starting with great field position off that return. Adams on the run, throws, and that one into the dirt. Adams rolling out to his left as a right-handed quarterback. It's going to be tough to square those shoulders up and complete that pass, especially when you got Javon Armstrong Grady bearing down on you. And before I get out of here, I will be remiss. My guy, Nate, has been telling me to say Norfolk the whole game. Can I say it, Nate? My wife is from Norfolk, so can I say it? Norfolk State University. <laughs> it's a pick out on the field Aaron Aaron Harris yet again on the interception big play defensively for a and and that's probably going to seal the deal Harris normally a great return guy pressed into action because of injury he's had a whale of a ball game today he certainly has as we get another look. Adams' eyes were straight there, and it was all Aggies. And Collis pride just falls down on the play and throws it right to his like just throwing it to the defender. Easy interception for the Aggies. And at this point in the ball game, you can start calling, you know. Your Ubers, you can start calling, you know, the babysitters, let them know you're on the way home because it's a wrap, people. Can I say it again, Nate? <laughs> Here's Tootin. He'll get taken down at the 11. The helmet's flying everywhere. North Carolina A&T will host Charleston Southern. In its final home game of the year, then on to Gardner-Webb to wrap up the regular season. Norfolk State, a tough road, have to host North Carolina Central, who beat this North Carolina A&T team to open up the season and then travel down to Orangeburg, South Carolina, to take on South Carolina State. And the Spartans played hard in this ball game, but ultimately too much North Carolina a and but the Aggies, who would have thunk it? After an 0-3 start, six straight, nobody believed in the Aggies, but God did. Tootin, chugging. To the six, where he is taken down, and that will be good for a first down. It will be first and goal, North Carolina a and with a buck 30 to go. So one more play, and the Aggies should be able to run this clock down. There's only one timeout remaining for Norfolk State. I'm Coach Odoms at Norfolk State. I'm proud of my guys. They fought Coach Washington on the other side. You can always teach off of a, off of a win. Better to teach off of a win than off of a loss. At the end of the day, this is a home dubs in harmony for the Aggies. 
Tootin marches into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, you gotta, gotta get Tootin those touchdown carries. That's four touchdowns in this ball game for Tootin. North Carolina A&T now with a rusher that has eight consecutive That's games impressive. of 100 yards on the ground. That is now a new Big South record as well. That's impressive. And I always like to mention the talent of Tootin in that backfield, but it's made possible by the push up front by the offensive line. So kudos to the O-line at North Carolina A&T during what is now a six-game winning streak. 58 seconds left, 49-24. North Carolina a &T leads it. And you see there, Bashal Tootin, 19 carries, 117 yards. Still a robust yards per carry average. And it felt like Norfolk kind of held him in check. But you look up at the, the stats and... It's a pretty darn good afternoon for the young man. And most importantly, you get out of here early, early game. Get and see the trainers. If you're injured, enjoy the rest of your evening. I, just, I thought that Tootin was close to 100 yards. I'm like, hey, maybe not. It, I guess it just looks easy. He, he makes it look so effortless. Now, remember, he did get carried for about five yards there. <laughs> he, did. he didn't have to run today. He did get carried for five yards. But even you take those five <laughs> yards away, still over 100. <laughs> but, yeah, just a run game for the Aggies. You knew coming into this one with Norfolk State struggling to stop the run. You know, Aggies didn't go wild on the ground like some may have anticipated, but they got just enough to get the job done. Brown will keep this one short. Here comes Norfolk State. Some lead blockers, and that one will end with Lex Henry being brought down to the ground. 49 seconds to go. Norfolk State just one time out. And, you know, you alluded to it a little earlier, Damian, and I think it's important to mention that Dawson Odom's ball club could have easily packed it in, even before showing up here today. Uh, they're one in seven, about to be one in eight, and yet the Spartans came and played the entire game, did not quit, pushed this a &T team to the brink there for a little bit, and you know what? Now they're going to do the classy thing and take a knee and let everybody go home healthy and continue on with their seasons, which... That's what happens when you have a guy like Sam Washington who recruited Dawson Odoms to North Carolina Central. Gave him a chance to play college football and they are still close today. And so this one will end with a t improving to six and three. Six consecutive victories for the Aggies. And the hunt for a Big South title continues for North Carolina a t Charleston Southern coming to Greensboro next week as the Aggies control their own destiny in search of a Big South title. With Coach Washington there meeting Coach Odom's mentor, mentee. And this is not tennis, but if you're Coach Odom's Norfolk State falling down 21 love, you got to be proud of you guys for coming back. Coach Washington ultimately gets the win. They have reeled off six consecutive wins. That's impressive in any sport. For our Greensboro-based ESPN crew and my partner, Damian Banks, I'm Spencer Turkin saying so long from Greensboro where the Aggies get it done through the air, 254 yards. Bayshaw Tudin goes north of 100 for the eighth consecutive game.